Hello, I'm pleased to be doing this video for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, the four means it is going to be a bit rambly. Look at this. I think I might have cooked it a little bit too long. It shrunk. The little tiny Jetson Nano. So this is the Jetson Aura Nano. This is old news, right? No, this is new news. This is a new version of this. Two very important pieces of information. $249 price down from $500. And also, it's quite a bit faster. More memory bandwidth, mainly, but also a higher wattage. 25 watts, up from 15. Well, you could run it in 7 or 15 before, but now 25. And also, I built Steve a robot. Let's dive in. You built Steve a robot? Steve's doing his own video on the Dice Rolling Robot. These are Gamers Nexus dice. Uh, should check them out. You can buy them from Gamers Nexus. I don't, <laughs> I'm not being paid for this plug or anything like that, although Steve did spend a lot of time and sweat a lot and, you know, paid people to come here to help me organize the studio and uh, with a few other things. So, uh, fun times. Thanks, Steve. L literally, thanks, Steve. But also, uh, he's doing these, these die, and as you can see, you know, there's a heavy copper component in these die. And so it's like, does it alter the fairness of the die? One way to figure that out is to roll the die a whole bunch and see, oh, look at that. I rolled another nat 20. Like, how likely is that? The component is at the bottom. Oh, that one wasn't running. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nat 20. <laughs> and also crumbs. So this is the Jetson Aura Nano 8 gig module. It's a 1024 NVIDIA Ampere architecture GPU with 32 tensor cores, six ARM cores. That is the Cortex A78 E V8.2 64 bit CPU, eight gigs of 128 bit LP DDR5, a micro SD slot. This thing has a display port. It has four USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A. It has USB type C. It has two M.2, 12280 and 12230, as well as an M.2 E key, which is populated with a Wi Fi adapter. It's an 802.11 AC adapter with Bluetooth 5, gigabit Ethernet, and a 40 pin expansion header UR, SPI, IDS, IDC, PWM, and GPIO. You can take that out to a board to do direct PWM servo control. That's what I used for the, the dice rolling robot, and that works fine. It also has two MIPI uh, CSI2 22 pin camera connectors and one DC jack. In the box is your power adapter, the board, and the carrier, and everything else. Look, it's the green on the inside, the NVIDIA green. This is what you get in the developer kit. This looks identical to the old developer kit, except it costs less and is really fast. Faster. Here is our power brick. 19 volts at 2.37 amps. That means the total brick power that we're working with here is on the order of 45 watts, which is pretty good. This is the actual module. It, it's in a, you know, this is a carrier board. This is designed so that you could design something around this. NVIDIA promises a 10 year lifetime for these modules. What they found is that folks like me that just have a problem to solve uh, are willing to buy these and just have a little bit of fun with them. So to use this, you're also gonna need a micro SD card or you could use an M.2 that's, that's pre-imaged or something like that. But there's a little hidden M.2 port right here on the front. Now in terms of PCIe lane configuration, you actually do have six, you actually do have six PCIe Gen 3 lanes, four for the, uh, the, the longer, the 2280 M.2, and two for the shorter M.2. So, I mean, theoretically you could use like a Coral AI module or something like that. Just keep in mind your overall power limit. Uh, it does vary a little bit computationally as well. They were telling us in the press briefing that if you have you know, a camera module or something like that, that's gonna come from your overall power budget. But if you're not running anything, if you're just doing compute, then yeah, the module itself can use a little bit more power for compute and you'll get a little bit more compute out of it. But you know, it's a bathtub curve. The, the, the less wattage, you get a bigger bang for your buck at the lower ends of those wattage ranges. But still, it's nice to have some more horsepower. The big improvement here though is memory bandwidth, which is gonna be great for retrieval, augmented generation type tasks as well as large language models. And this thing, you run Ubuntu, it's a fully supported Linux distro. You can run Olama, the fully supported, o we've done tons of videos on Olama 
runs it here natively. It's local glorious AI. So the AI performance in Int8, you know, it's been sparsified, is 40 tops on the old platform, but 67 tops on this platform. 20 tops for dense and 33 tops for this. And a lot of that comes from uh, not just clock increases and the increased wattage, but the eight gigs of LPDDR5 is now up to 102 gigabytes per second. That's quite a jump from 68 gigabytes per second on the old Orin Nano. So this is the Orin Nano Super. The super and super literally means almost, not quite, twice the memory bandwidth. Well, 40% more. It's booting. So running Llama 3.1, an 8 billion parameter model on this, you know, just in Olama and, you know, like for like testing in the old Jetson, it is actually 41% faster on this platform. NVIDIA's estimate was 37% faster, so that was a little conservative. Or maybe it's because I've, you know, not got anything else running on this board and it's got a little bit more power budget. I really couldn't tell you, but that is very, very impressive. For image recognition and image processing, because, you know, rolling the die, uh, we're using YOLO, but we also experimented a little bit with small um, uh, VLM, and uh, it's, it's like 60% faster. Uh, memory bandwidth. It's down to that memory bandwidth. Not necessarily processing. So that plus the 10 year lifetime on this, Nvidia really expects a lot of people to be able to incorporate this into at the edge things. Like we don't need to shove a $10,000 GPU in an appliance that's just validating randomly sampled die, okay? I mean, it doesn't need to be anything super complicated with that. And this fits the bill because you can do industrial control with SPI or I square or whatever other interface you want. It's got two reasonably fast CSI2 connections. So you can build a little industrial solution around this and at $250, I mean, you could almost get this for your, you know, precocious nephew or something and just say, hey, uh, AI, here you go. And running this, they'll get Linux experience and be able to do a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, webcam, for Steve's thing, we use a webcam, a USB webcam, which also works great with this platform for our image capture instead of a CSI module. We probably should be using a CSI module, but the webcam was cheap and available in here. Although, because it's USB, it is a little bit flaky. Thanks, Logitech. Uh, probably wouldn't be as flaky if I would refactor the code to not uninitialize and reinitialize the USB port every single time. That seems to be the thing that the webcam doesn't like, but hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> It's not terribly slow. And also, you know, congratulations, intern, for getting a lot of work done. Be sure to check out Steve's video on the nuts and bolts of that. But uh, bottom line was you've got all these die. How do, you, how do you build something that'll only see the one face? So we actually built something that would recognize the image from below because uh, anything physically touching trace paper will be in focus, you can see it, but everything else won't be. And so that turned out to be a really uh, interesting way to do optical filtering to roll the die. Also, there's not a pre-trained model out there that recognizes the Gamers Nexus logo, so it required a little bit of fine tuning with all of the other models in terms of like, hey, let's recognize this. Also involved a lot of manual data capture. It's like, you've got, you know, the, the white style lettering and the gold style lettering. You've also got Snowflake's paw prints that you have to worry about in terms of image recognition, but listen, if a couple of idiots can incorporate this kind of a thing into a quality control industrial workflow, that really uh, sets the stage for a lot of new things that are possible with entrepreneurialism. Your dentist, in addition to having a tooth to 3D printer, well, it's really subtractive. It's a tooth CNC machine, so they can scan your face in 3D, they can scan the hole in 3D, and then uh, machine a, a tooth out of ceramic to fit that, which is amazing. We're living in the future. Um, but also the thing that did the 3D recognition, all that other kind of stuff, that, that was probably a gaming GPU in that system. Probably not even. And so solutions, <laughs> modern solutions. <laughs> so modern problems require modern solutions. You'd be surprised how often things like this are incorporated into uh, solutions that you don't necessarily see every time, but things like this get deployed. And tested and used and eight gigabytes of LPDDR5 in this platform with this number of tensor cores and everything else for $250 isn't a terrible deal. It's like a 
Raspberry Pi on steroids, except you can do AI with it in large language models and retrieval augmented generation. And maybe this thing would make a good platform for Home Assistant with some language processing capabilities where you just talk to Home Assistant and say, hey, I'm going to be out today. Do the thing that we do when almost nobody's here. Let me know if randos show up on the porch. Can do, boss. You can basically build your own Jarvis. This is, this is a thing. Let's take a closer look at the Ubuntu operating system and everything you get with this. You, you can image your own SD card with this. You just have to go to NVIDIA's website, download the image and run it and you're good to go. But let's take a closer look at the OS. What about those CSI modules? Isn't a big part of AI image recognition? Well, you can do image recognition. And keep in mind, you know, when we're talking about eight gigs of GDDR5, or eight, or I'm sorry, eight gigs of LPDDR5, it's not the same as GDDR5, but still 100 gigabytes per second, it's not bad. And this thing is compatible with Raspberry Pi Camera V2. And you could use a USB camera, that's fine. Certainly the early Steve prototypes were camera based, but if you're gonna have a visual or an optical system to recognize how your die ended up, then you need a vision system. This thing actually has a stereo vision system. There's two CSI connectors, CSI2 actually. And so you can use a Raspberry Pi camera with it. And the only thing that you gotta keep in mind is your, your standard Raspberry Pi cable is one millimeter pin spacing. This actually uses the newer style half millimeter pin spacing. So you need a special ribbon cable that goes from half millimeter to one millimeter. And you should check the Jetson compatibility list for camera modules because not every camera module is compatible, but the V2 camera, which is what I have here, is compatible. And it's eight megapixels, so the image quality is quite good. And you can 3D print some accessories. You can do face recognition. And that's when I wanted to talk about the software aspect of this. There's something called the Jetson Zoo. There's all kinds of open source projects. NVIDIA holds nearly yearly, sometimes more than yearly, contests for people doing cool stuff. And with this, it's built a whole ecosystem. Everybody has heard of Raspberry Pi, but NVIDIA basically took the model from Raspberry Pi and has built an entire ecosystem around this. I mean, this is really third or fourth generation technology, depending on how you want to count. And in that, NVIDIA has kind of like stealth snuck up on everybody. You don't see other players in the market with a board like this that gives you accessibility. I mean, heck, it can be a little bit of a pain to get this sort of stuff running, even on a desktop computer. And to be sure, a desktop class of GPU, like a $250 GPU and on up, is gonna be way more AI and other computational horsepower beyond this. But there is something nice and clean about having everything self-contained on this little machine and you can experiment on it. And if something goes sideways, you can reinstall. You haven't messed up your main computer. That is nice. The software stack and everything else gets you up and running with YOLO for image recognition. I mean, there's just, there's an example project for basically everything that you can think of, including rolling and recognizing die, image recognition, whatever industrial thing you want to build, whatever you want to do. There's probably somebody else that has already produced an open source project you can use as a starting point so that you're not starting from scratch necessarily. And that's what this ecosystem is so exciting is just, it's what it's all about. It is really neat. Oh, we're having a contest, by the way, to give away one of these that was actually signed by Jensen himself. You could create an agentic AI that reasons and plans. So you could use it for a robot, you could use it for a workstation. It's an incredible computer. What do you guys think? So if you're interested in that, check out the level one forum post that goes with this video where we talk about some of Steve's project. We probably got a link to Steve's video just as soon as it's live. And yeah, you could win this by engaging there. Well, there you have it. This thing is launched as of December 17th and available now. And if you bought one a couple of weeks ago for $500, I'm sorry, you should send it back and get this one for 250. Hell, get two of them. Why not? I'm Woodless Level 1. If you have any questions or you want to take something like this for this, a spin or something like that, just let me know. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Jensen's Jetson? Jensen's Jetson.